Hello, my name is Staff Sergeant Parker Games, and I'm a clarinetist in the President's Own United States Marine Band. Today I'd like to talk to you about sight reading music. I often hear from people that they can or can't sight read music. The truth is that sight reading is an important skill uh, that can be practiced and developed like many other musical skills. My colleagues and I in the United States Marine Band sight read all the time. So much so that we call for sight reading on every audition here. When I have to sight read a piece of music, I ask myself four questions. One, what markings are on the page that can inform my interpretation of the music? Two, are there any rhythmic patterns I recognize? Three, are there any note patterns that I recognize? And four, what tempo can I reasonably expect myself to play the music at as accurately as possible? Today, I'm going to be sight reading uh, an excerpt from Franz Schubert's The Shepherd on the Rock for soprano, clarinet, piano, found near the end of the piece. And I'm going to ask myself these four questions as I prepare to sight read the excerpt. First, before I even pick up my instrument, I look on the music to see if there are any written clues that will help me decide how I'm going to interpret the music. I see that the music is by Franz Schubert, who lived from 1797 to 1828. So I know that he lived at the very end of the classical era and at the very beginning of the romantic era. So I want to play with a, a centered sound, a focused sound, airing on the darker side of the tone spectrum. I want to play in, in longer phrases with a lot of uh, with a lot of phrase direction. I see that the music says più mosso, which means more motion or more movement. So I know that the excerpt is pretty fast, but I'm not going to worry about that so much right now because I'm sight reading. I also see that the music has a number of accents on the page. I see that there's a piano marking, a several forte markings, fortissimo marking, crescendos. So I want to be sure to bring those aspects of the music out when I, when I play it. I next examine the time signature of the excerpt. It's in 2-4. And study what types of rhythmic patterns are found. I see many strings of 16th notes. I see some 8th to 16th note combinations. I also see some 8th notes in isolation, some quarter notes, and one half note. Remember, rhythm is the most important element of music. So I pay the most attention to these relationships no matter what tempo I play. I next examine whether I recognize any patterns of notes. Are there any scale patterns or arpeggio patterns? As it turns out, there are many in this excerpt. I see C major scale passages, C major arpeggios, an F major arpeggio, D minor arpeggios, G7 arpeggios, C7 arpeggios, and several diminished arpeggios. If I've practiced my scales and arpeggios and I see a part of these within the music that is in front of me, my fingers will have the muscle memory to recall certain sets of notes. The tempo marking piumoso means more motion, so I know that the music is supposed to go rather quick, probably around quarter note equals 120. I don't feel confident that I can play this at 120 the very first time, so I'm going to cut that tempo in half to around 60 and finger through it. Since that went well, I decide to play it a bit faster, at maybe quarter note equals 100. I think this is probably a good tempo for me to sight read the music for the very first time. At this tempo, I pay very close attention to what my fingers are doing and to the rhythmic relationships between the notes. In general, while practicing, always start slowly. It doesn't matter how many hours a day you practice, if you practice wrong the first time and then do it over and over and over again, it's always going to be wrong. Careful, slow practice is essential. So my challenge for you is, to sight read one line of music today using the four questions I described. Bonus if you can keep it up all week. <laughs>